Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Monday, the 13th day of February, 2023. I hope that you had a good weekend, that your family had a good weekend, and that you and your family are safe and healthy on this day. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field who along with the first responders every day are saving lives. Blessings also upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets and highways and parks clean and disease free. And those that make delivery of important things like mail, and food and water for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver and recover the teenagers and the children who are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia, the victims of pornography and child pornography, the victims of prostitution and child prostitution, the victims of human trafficking and sex slavery, double curses on the perpetrators, double curses on the profiteers, double curses on the perverts who create and do this heinous acts in this miserable industry, finally. Blessings upon the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and mostly children in the streets of the United States of America and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. Tonight, there is a scheduled basketball game. New York Knicks will face off against the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets have been drastically changed in the last 10 days, drastically changed in that they lost both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving through trades. Uh, they have retooled their team. Um, someone described it as a retool and not a rebuild. And I understand that. Um, it looks like that that's what they're trying to do, retool. Because right now, in the East, uh, the Brooklyn Nets are, at this point, the fifth seed. They're the fifth seed. And so, um, just because they lost Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant... They don't want to just give up all the games that they had. It makes sense that they would try their best to call scratch and keep as high a seed as they can to try to make the playoff. Uh, but on the other hand, if you look at the fact that they gave away a lot of young talent, draft picks, so on and so forth, to obtain Kevin Durant and assign Kyrie Irving, uh, you would think maybe they want to break it down and rebuild again. But at this point, they're not committed to doing that. So it's a weird situation. We expect uh, generally what happens after a situation like this is they'll come out real scrappy uh, trying to trying to win every game as they should. Uh, the new players are trying to win every game. The players that are there are trying to prove they can win without the people that were traded. And so they're going to be real scrappy, real fighting. You know, there's going to be a lot of fighting them tonight. Uh, Jock Vaughn has done a tremendous job both with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and without. And so... Um, you know, this is not going to be an easy game, but it's a, win a very winnable game for the Knicks. Now, on the Knicks side, excuse me, we know that they just acquired Josh Hart. That the nine-man rotation uh, that Tom Thibodeau employs is still in effect. Not only that, but we also know that Ju uh, Deuce McBride is out of the rotation and Josh Hart is in the rotation. So that the rotation now consists of the starting five of Brunson, Grimes, Barrett, Randall, Sims, and then Hartenstein, Toppin, Hart, and quickly uh, the uh, four people plays coming off the bench. Um, this this is going to change um, because of the return of Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson has pretty much been ruled out to after the All Star uh, week, uh, All Star break, which makes sense because you only had the Knicks only have two more games. There's tonight's game uh, against Brooklyn, and then there's a game Wednesday. Uh, they play the last game before the break. They play Atlanta, at Atlanta. And so uh, those are the last two games, and then there's a nine-day break. Uh, I believe Mitchell Robinson is probably close to ready. They don't want to rush him back because it's going to be very important for the Knicks to have him coming down the stretch. Um, Tom Thibodeau, in my view, has done an excellent job in, in making corrections and adjustments to keep the Knicks competitive defensively as much as he can while Mitchell Robinson has been out. Mitchell Robinson is the main cog of their defense. So, um, but they have learned very well and, and a lot of players have stepped up. Uh, particularly, I want to mention Julius Randle because in the absence of 
Mitchell Robinson. Julius Randle has really taken on some tough assignments and basically has helped the Knicks win a few games just by his defense in terms of his commitment to the defensive end. He's always had the talent to play defense. It's just that he hasn't always been committed. But this is the difference between Julius Randle, what we're seeing in 2023, and what we saw in the second half of the season in 2021, where the Knicks made their 4C run into the playoffs and lost to Atlanta in the first round. The difference is he's totally committed on both sides of the ball. He's totally committed to working within a team concept. He's totally committed to winning, okay, as a team. So he's showing trust. In a Quentin Grimes. He's showing trust, obviously, in a Jalen Brunson. He's showing trust in his teammates. Um, and, and he is and he's really doing a lot better job in terms of turnover. And of course, he's always been a ferocious rebounder, and that continues now. And again, he's won some games for the Knicks with those skills. So that's going to continue. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's going to continue. Jalen Brunson has now stepped up his game to another level, passing the ball more, as well as now he has a new teammate in Josh Hart. Josh Hart really made a huge difference with Mob Deep, uh, even in his first outing. I know there's a honeymoon phase, uh, and that's mo no more dangerous uh, place to have one than in New York because the honeymoon phase, once it's over, then people start calling for you to be traded and saying it was stinking. They start talking about management. It's a normal thing in New York. So, uh, but even with that being the case, uh, Josh Hart is a tremendous upgrade. And this is the thing. We wanted Mob Deep to have an upgrade. I was thinking Alex Caruso would be that guy or Sadiq Bey would be that guy to upgrade Mob Deep. It wasn't like we were going, we, you know, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Everybody, a lot of people get hyped because media brings it up and brings up all these blockbuster trades. Um, it's not good to try to make blockbuster trades at the trade deadline. The last time the Knicks did that, that was with Carmelo Anthony. That did not work out too well. So in terms of uh, long-term sustainable winning. So um, I'm glad that in, under Leon's regime, it's been incremental moves at the trade deadline. And this was another one. But this was a big one because now you add a player that, Brunson loves, obviously, they like brothers coming up and winning championships at Villanova together. But you have a veteran that knows his game, knows how to play the game, very comfortable in his role, plays within himself, tremendous rebounder, tremendous defender, tremendous IQ, and then can knock down the occasional uh, three-point shot as he did Saturday night. He's going to provide a lot in a lot of areas. First of all, he bring, again, he brings up Mob Deep to a new level. Saturday night, they scored 34 points off the bench. If they can continue to do that, the Knicks are going to be very formidable. But aside from that, um, he also brings a second guy that you can put in to guard the perimeter along with Quentin Grimes. Quentin Grimes and Deuce McBride are probably the two best perimeter defenders the Knicks have. But if, if, if Deuce is out in the rotation, you now still have a guy that's a 4'6", 4'6", 5", that can guard the perimeter and, and Guard the best offensive wing on the opposing team. And so now you're going to be able to give Grimes a little slack. And I think that's going to help Grimes long term, especially this is his second year. You know, he really missed a lot of last year because of the knee issue that he had. And so this is really he's hitting the wall right now. But he's once he gets past that, he's going to be fine. But this is going to help him get through the wall and help him and then help the Knicks in the playoffs. So the strengthening of the bench not only helps Mob Deep, it helps the whole team. This is going to be good. Um, generally speaking, generally speaking, prior to this, when R.J. Barrett starts slow, whenever he does, it hurts the Knicks. It adds to a hole that they get in, like a deficit and they have to fight back from. But with Josh Hart, he kind of helps cover that. He kind of helps alleviate that because of what he brings off the bench. So I'm very excited for these next two games and for the All-Star break because All-Star break is when teams get whole. Okay, That's when they rest up. That's when they get whole. And so Mitchell Robinson probably is chomping at the bit to get back uh, to the Knicks. He's probably chomping at the bit. He's probably running, knowing him. He's getting ready. And it's going to be a nice stretch run 
you know, in March down the stretch for the New York Knicks, in my opinion. So uh, right now, the Knicks are 31 and 27. And so with a 31 and 27, that there's actually that's 58 games, there's 24 games left. I'm expecting the Knicks to go at least 14 and 10 down the stretch. That would give them the 45 wins I've been talking about the whole season. I think they go at least 14 and 10. They could do better. I don't think they're going to do worse, though. I think the Knicks are going to be playing their best basketball from this point forward. And if you remember two years ago, the Knicks were struggling. Not struggling, but they were playing like 500 ball until this point. And what happened at this point that at that season is they got Derrick Rose from Detroit. Okay? That season, they got Derrick Rose and Treat. Now, all you Derrick Rose lovers, I'm not bringing his name up for you. I'll start tripping. And Tipper don't need to find minutes for D-Rose. For, for I'm not saying that. But I am saying, though, the Knicks made a move around the trade deadline that boosted their team. And then they and then they went on to go into the fourth seed. This Josh Hart move is similar. They made a move around the trade deadline to tweak their team and get them rolling along with the natural progression that Tom Thibodeau teams have in the second half of a season. So I'm really expecting nice things from our t- New York Knicks coming down the stretch here. And, uh, and I'm hoping they finish this week strong starting tonight against Brooklyn. It's going to be a very important game. Not important. Well, yes, it is important, but interesting. It's important and interesting. Important, of course, because we're in the second half of the season and every game counts and we're trying to get into that fifth or sixth seed. Interesting because they do, the, Knicks, the Nets do not have the two superstars. And we're going to see how the Knicks handle that and how the Nets handle that. It's going to be very interesting to watch. And especially it being in Brooklyn. I think the fans in Brooklyn are probably going to support their team being down by those two guys. The way, the, the way it all went down. And it's going to be an interesting game. Um, I think it's going to be another grinded out game. Um, because, like I said, the Nets are going to be scrappy and the Knicks just grind out every game. So... It's going to be, it's, we're going to see what happens, but I'm expecting a strong week from the Knicks in these last two games. Uh, we're going to see how this pans out starting tonight. On the injury list is only at this point Mitchell Robinson, so everybody's, everybody's healthy, everybody's ready. So let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Anyway, enjoy your Monday. Enjoy the game. Shalom.